The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Talkin' Cowboys. Steve. Streaming live from the Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star in Frisco. C.D. Lamb. Touchdown. Parsons has second. Prescott keeps it, keeps it. And he bangs it into the touchdown. And now your hosts, Isaiah Stanback. Nick Harris, John Mashoda, and Kyle Yeomans. It's an off-season edition of Talking Cowboys presented by Black Rifle Coffee Company, live from the star in Frisco, Texas, in the SWBC studio. Welcome in, everybody. Glad you're with us. We have the full cast and crew back in the fold. That's right. Everybody's ready to roll. We've got Nick Harris, John Machoda, Isaiah Stanback, Hello. Chris Beam in the back. I'm Kyle Yeomans. KY, How are we doing? The one and only. Doing well. My uh, my headphones are low, so I'm going to take them off. But doing well. I'm doing fantastic. Yeah. Can't complain. You, what, what you got right there? Uh, what you got back here? <clears throat> What's, what is that? Oh, that old what, thing right what there? What is that thing? I don't have one. Where's mine? Yeah. What, yeah. The, that's the what official the 2024 what? Dallas Cowboys <laughs> draft guide. Yep. These are the first copies printed. They're not even available. Mm. To the public yet? Yep, They're I haven't even coming seen them. soon. Yeah, Nick hadn't even had a. He wrote a, a good chunk of this thing, hey, and he hasn't even seen it yet. I feel some type of way right now, though. There's no Washington. There's an Oregon guy on here, but not a Washington guy. That was a. That was just a. Keep going through it. Just that just, was a I mean, conscious. But it's the cover. Keep going I know, but that was a man. conscious decision I know on it my was. part to leave out Washington. Wow, not you, even you the first two. You got to win the national championship. Not the first. Yeah, they're runners up, but we beat. We beat Oregon in the Pac-12 championship. Oregon, yeah. Oregon won yeah, the Oregon Fiesta Bowl. Oregon is the best center in the, in the country. Yeah. <laughs> Oregon was a Fiesta Bowl champion. Is their player going to get drafted before a Washington player? Uh, no. No. There's no. no we yeah. have two players that would get drafted before <laughs> him. I was, I was like, I was like, Fountain? No, maybe. I was no. like, oh, doing no. Right We have now. two players that's going to get drafted before Oregon guy. I'll yeah. tell you what disappoints me about this. Oh, no. Uh, There's not an athletic logo on there? <laughs> that. But, like, for ads like this, where they have Dak, uh -huh. like, how can't? You have just Nick Harris in some of these. Like, yeah. You have yeah. Harris, yeah. Harris, yeah. Harris, Harris, just me on top of the plane. With all the work that he's put in here. You yep. can have hold, him holding some Canada Drive. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think Nick has a, has a calendar coming out. Say it, man. <laughs> oh, no. You, they they would have had to book me for a photo shoot. That's, that's the problem. I've heard you on the, the radio Harris doing edition. ad reads. <laughs> I know you're ready for it. Yeah. The Harris yeah, edition calendar shoot. Let's go. We've Let's got to go. find a way to, to fit him. Some sponsor's going to pick him up. Maybe yeah. Black Rifle take out a page ad next Nick, year what would it take for you to have your own oh, calendar that would be so funny calendar yes <laughs> just a couple dollars yeah i'm fine with oh, that oh shoot i've heard of that as I'll a, show, I'll show I a couple skin i'll show I will, a little skin i will start a go <laughs> no, no, don't do that do we get to pick the outfits yeah oh man let's yeah. go <laughs> don't, don't, price has got to be right don't, do that. don't get excited the price has got to be right do what that. would the price be right. yeah we'll What's the have price? talk about it is you have to get with my is it four numbers or five you have to give him my agent. You have an agent? It, 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 it might be six, depending on the outfit. Oh! oh. Yeah, I don't know if we got yeah, that kind of We don't of have bread. that kind of... You can't raise that kind of bread. Now, I've heard of it being a fantasy football punishment. Have you ever heard of that? Fantasy. It's a fantasy art. Where you do the... <laughs> you, <laughs> at the end of the season, the last place uh, player in your fantasy yes. football league has to do... A calendar shoot? The body issue. Calendar. Yes, let's do it. Like, and and everybody gets a copy. Is that of what we're it. doing this year? No, fantasy football. <laughs> uh, your hand's gonna stay yeah, there for a long time. We're not doing yeah. that. What? <laughs> what? I'll do fantasy football, but I'm not doing a calendar. Yeah, well, just don't lose. Oh, is that how, how it works? Just yeah, easy? yeah. Because I said that last that, year, and that, I ended up taking the SAT. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. It sounds like somebody that's never played fantasy football because there's I so much luck involved. With Absolutely, it. there is. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> out of here. We're not. <laughs> <laughs> For those that are listening, my hand is extended, it's, and they're just yeah. looking at it right the now. Guy, the guy that they works out every shake day him. is fine with doing a calendar. <laughs> <laughs> just surprise. Study. Oh, dang uh, it. Surprise. Beamer. Come surprise. on, man. We can raise some funds. Beamer wouldn't lose. That's the thing. Facts. It? Exactly. That's Beamer the confidence knows. you got to have. I don't, I don't want to play against Beamer in anything, especially cornhole. Somebody asked football. me about cornhole last week, and I had to, they were like, man, I said, yeah, I bet you're really good at cornhole. I was like, actually, mm. I am actually relatively okay, except for when I play against guys like Beamer, because Beamer destroyed me, made it seem like I was a young boy, <laughs> and he was a dog on Jedi <laughs> night at training camp this it year. Was yeah. fun. Be Beam is Mr. Cornhole. <laughs> he is. Yeah, I, 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 I take my hat off for him. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. All right, let's get into some news and notes. There's a couple things going on and have been going on around the star in Frisco, mostly draft-related, Nick, mm -hmm. whenever you look at 
Dallas Day, 30 visits starting this week. The Big 12 Pro Day was in town. Where do you want to start with those? Well, we could also start with uh, owners' meetings last week. That's uh, just kind of what wrapped up there in, in Orlando last week, the new kickoff rule getting approved, which is um, it's fascinating because they adopted it from the XFL, but then you look at the UFL this last weekend, and they just ended up going right back to the normal kickoff rules, except they pushed it back to the 20-yard line. So it's, it's, it's kind of fascinating that they basically just swapped kickoff rules. But we'll see how that, that uh, goes into play this next year. Um, uh, kickers are incentivized to kick it between the goal line and the 20-yard line instead of just kicking it out of the end zone as, as far as they can so uh, that'll be an interesting adjustment for Brandon Aubrey and then Kevontae Turpin he's gonna have to really dial in on his field vision to uh, uh, get get some big returns I know I've been critical of his field vision on this podcast in the past so I, I think there's gonna have to be some improvement there with Turpin to be able to break some of those returns in that new kickoff rule um, but moving past off of uh, owners meetings yeah, as you mentioned, Kyle, 30 visits this week. Uh, Dallas Day was yesterday. Uh, Big 12 Pro Day was this past weekend at the Star. A lot of things happening. Uh, 30 visits, we'll have a little bit more on the draft show on that. But um, basically, they're bringing in 30 of their top prospects, you know, the, uh, across all seven rounds that, you know, they want to talk with and meet with more in person. And they'll, they'll go through basically a car wash talking to people mm -hmm. around the <clears> building, <throat> whether it be front office, uh, coaches, position coaches, uh, strength and conditioning, scouting, all of that. Um, it's a really good opportunity for the team to be able to meet with these guys and get a better view of who they are in person um and then after that it's it's all full steam ahead into the draft here we're getting about three weeks away which is crazy mm. it's, it's i remember quick. 30 visits yeah where did you where, take where, yeah where did you take yours i went to <clears throat> i went to dallas did you go to seattle for like a local day mm -mm. Really? didn't go to seattle really i was not in their top 30 did apparently you feel, did you feel the type of way about not that? even a little bit oh, not okay. even a little bit i went to dallas <laughs> i went to st louis at the time, uh -huh. mm -hmm. I went to Jacksonville and Miami. Okay. Which one was your favorite? So to say there's three really bad airports there, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, I had to, and I had to fly back to, I think I was in L.A. at the time. I had to fly back to L.A. every time. Like, mm -hmm. they wouldn't let you go. Like, if I flew to Dallas, they Were wouldn't you let me fly out to St. LA? Louis. Yeah, I was, I was rehabbing oh, in L.A. Okay. So, like, they wouldn't let me fly to Dallas and into St. Louis. Like, there was one time I flew from L.A. to Miami. And then I had to fly back to L.A. just to fly back to Jacksonville. I think you told us this story. Yeah, it yeah, sucked. Yeah, you told us this story. <clears throat> it That's sucked. That's a lot yeah, of flying, bro. That is a lot of flying. But, no, there were good visits. Uh, I remember sitting down with, with Double J uh, the first time, had opportunity to do that. I remember flying it to DFW, and that was my first time ever experiencing that. And I was like, this is the biggest airport in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't remember where we met, but I feel like we met at the airport there. I mean, we met, we met at the hotel at the airport. I think that's like the Hyatt or something. Yeah, I think it was there. Yeah. I remember still seeing the, the airport while I was there. So that was that was interesting. Probably um, a Marriott. Yeah. Uh, the one that I hated the most, I can tell you that, the one I hated the most was Miami yeah. because Miami had messed around with my foot. At the time, I was rehabbing my foot mm -hmm. from tearing out, tearing my, my Liz, Liz Frank injury. Um, and they had already contorted my foot in a really bad way. I think I might have shared that at some point mm -hmm. in time uh, at the Combine. And I didn't really take a, a good liking to that. Yeah. And I went down there, and they did more of that. And yeah. their doctors were pretty much just, like, prodding me, just just, just doing everything they could to try to elicit any kind of pain reaction from me to see exactly how far along I was in rehab. And then they took a kicker, I think. Wow. Yeah. They called me and woke me up as well the second day of the draft because that's when they were doing the first – it was the first three rounds, day one, yeah. and then it was four through seven, day two. Back back in two thousand and seven, when I got drafted, and they called and woke me up from my sleep, and then took a dog on kicker, I believe it was, or a punter. Wow! Yeah, I was pretty angry. Wow. So Miami, I was that was not a fan of Miami. How long did that kicker make it in the league? Did you I don't track even him? know, bro. I don't even You're know. You're like, I'm gonna make it further than <laughs> no, Jake Moody. I don't even know who it was. Oh, um, oh, I'm gonna figure it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh seven. Who did they take in the in the fourth? Yeah, but um, they, they took well, a kicker early in the fourth. In the fourth. I think uh, I think so that's it what it was in the fourth. If you're done by the Dolphins. Yeah, yeah was, they was would have had to take him in the third because you went early third? in the fourth. Yeah, I went top and fourth. Well, in the third round, they took Lorenzo Booker, running back out of Florida Book. State. Yeah, I remember Book. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so yeah, that was my that was my top round. thirty. Oh, we're gonna get to the bottom of this. Yeah, <laughs> if I my, my memory might be jacked up, I got hit a few times. Oh, Adam Vinatieri. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Nah. <laughs> oh, Adam yeah. Vinatieri. Yeah. Now, uh, two Jacksonville spot, yeah, took Jacksonville a took a punter, punter that's after. That's who. That's who. I think it was. It was Jacksonville. Took a punter. Jacksonville. Mm. Yeah, Pittsburgh took Daniel Sp Spadovita from uh, Baylor. You say that again? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, say it again. Say it again. One more time. Just sound it Sepulveda. out. There you go. <laughs> but, you know, the business was cool, man. But, uh, you know, you see guys. You don't really see a lot of guys. Like, it's kind of like you're kind of 
everything is very scheduled. I remember at, at least at that time, everything was very yeah. scheduled. You didn't yeah. really pass a lot of guys. It wasn't like, oh, we're all eating in the same spot. It was like you fly in, you meet, you fly out yeah. at that time. Yeah. I don't know how different it is now. It's not I'm looking too for like far a random off. player that you were drafted. If, I mean, from a of. from a thirty visit standpoint, <clears throat> right now you come in, you you immediately meet. You usually eat breakfast at the facility. Okay. And you get to meet with a bunch of coaches, position coaches. Uh-huh. And then they they set up blocks of time. So yeah. you meet with the the front office staff. Then you meet with the scouts. Then you meet with the coaching, and then you meet with the head coach. And it's kind of like all over. It's just a block day. And then you you fly out later then yeah. in the night, so it's not too far off from what you had. Maybe maybe another free meal or two thrown in. That's Who not knows? bad, but it's not bad at all. Um, that's that's really yeah. what it looks like. Yep, that's cool. It is important to keep track of thirty visits though, because I mean the Cowboys traditionally will take somebody multiple thirty visits in the upcoming draft, and at different times in the draft, it may not be. The first round pick, but it could be your second round pick, third round pick. Who knows? How or much of that fifth. do you think? Or your fifth? I guess per. I guess it depends on the last organization. year they took a sixth in terms of the gamesmanship, being that you know, because that kind of it can kind of tip your hat in terms of who you're really looking at. How much of that is like kind of gamesmanship in terms of oh we're gonna bring this guy in well, just because? I will say that under Jason Garrett, it was very telling who the thirty. It has not been as telling mm-hmm. under Mike McCarthy, um, but under J, when Jason Garrett was head coach. Man, that was a really good bet. I want to say all of his first round picks, aside from Mo Claiborne, were 30, 30 visit mm-hmm. guys. Whereas with the Cowboys, um, I don't think CeeDee Lamb was a 30 visit. I don't believe so. There's been a couple that, and since McCarthy's been Sneaky. head coach, they didn't take. Yeah. So, um, well, and like Jalen Hurts was a 30 visit in that 2020 draft because yeah. it was the virtual and they did all the, right. that stuff. So, Jalen Hurts was technically a 30 visit, Tyler Smith was not. Yeah. Micah and Mozzie were. So yeah. it's like it, it's not completely telling. Uh, and, I mean, you'll see it at times. Last year they had a ton of receivers in the building. They had Quentin Johnston from TCU. They had Jackson Smith and Jigba from Rockwall. That's kind of a, a Dallas Day thing. But they have these guys, these these position groups that they have no interest in taking Correct. currently that will come in. And either that's a part of the gamemanship just to kind of like muddy the water mm-hmm. or it's future consideration. You know, you, <clears throat> hey, we're not going to trade up to go get Caleb Williams, Correct. but hey, you may bring him in just to go see like what's going on. Yeah. Like, how's he how's he process the game? How does he do on a whiteboard? How does he mesh with coaching staff? I mean, all that kind of stuff matters. So that way down the road, seven or eight years, who knows? Maybe Caleb Williams is available and that's just another conversation. If Washington had the number one overall pick and it was like as certain as it is for Chicago taking Caleb Williams, would you waste a 30 visit on bringing Caleb Williams in just to see what he's got? Just to see what he's got? Just to pick his brain. Sure, I would. <laughs> if you're Caleb Williams' yeah. agent, would you show up? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah, <clears throat> that that's a good point too. Uh, there was a there was a guy that was I mean top top five eligible the last couple of years that came in. I'm gonna have to come go back and look at my notes. I would go to every single thirty visit that yep. I was invited to. I don't Me care too. If I wasn't be the number one, Me surely. Too. Yeah, because yeah. I would be just fine if some really good team is going to package up a, a ton of picks and yeah. come up and get me, and I'm in a way better situation than going to yeah. whoever was yeah. the worst also, team the year before. Like, yeah, I'm definitely. Also, there. I hope that these agents are passing along wisdom in terms of the long game, right? Because, yeah, you there might be teams that are trying to get you to come <clears throat> do a thirty visit that aren't anywhere in position to take you yeah right you know obviously they can do trades and things of that nature but realistically they're not in a position to take you in this year's draft at mm-hmm. the pick that you're most likely going to go at but five years from now you don't know how that meeting can have an impact on what may come in the future so in terms of the long games you know relationship building you know how is your you know how is your character you know are you going to come on the visit do you think that you're bigger than the organization do you think that you're bigger than the pick like there's so many other things that you can take away from that that I hope that these agents are putting their guys in position to take advantage of if they're invited on some of these 30 visits hmm. that's the point of the 30 visit right is to get to know these product or these prospects to get to know them on a, a deeper level than just film and medicals because mm-hmm. that's that's what they have right now is film medicals and then in, any informal or formal meeting that they've had either at the senior bowl or combine down the road this the, is the formal formal is mm-hmm. ultimately what it is the thing with him talking mm-hmm. about the foot though if i was coming off of an injury i think maybe that might after now hearing that story hinder that yeah where i'm like i don't know if i need to go to every single I'm, and again i'm talking about you know being the number one overall pick or 
likely going to be the number one overall pick. I don't know if I want all these teams doing all doing that to yeah. me. And and yes, but if if I'm healthy and they just want to sit down and talk to me, like I don't think I would turn anybody down. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's take our first break. When we come back, I want to talk a little bit about the cap situation. And I know that sounds kind of broad, but that's that's what it needs to be. The cap situation is what it is for the Cowboys because of X. We're going to talk about that and what the Cowboys could do for the rest of the offseason because we're weeks at this point into free agency and there still hasn't been a ton of movement. We're going to talk about it when we come back right after this on Talking Cowboys. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Black Rifle Coffee Company serves premium coffee to people who love America. When you drink Black Rifle Coffee, you are directly supporting veterans, law enforcement, and first responders in your community. Black Rifle's expert roasters love coffee almost as much as Texas loves football, so it makes sense that America's Coffee partnered with America's team. Go online at BlackRifleCoffee.com and fuel up with the official coffee of the Dallas Cowboys. That's BlackRifleCoffee.com to fuel up today. Cowboys fans, after that move, we've just coined the term Rowdy Replay. Let's roll back the tape. Okay, there's our mascot Rowdy cheering on the boys. And now he's on his phone, on his Bank of America mobile banking app? Staying on top of his finances with his virtual financial assistant, Erica. Bank of America's digital tools are so impressive. Cowboys fans just can't stop banking. Learn more at bankofamerica.com slash can't stop banking. Erica is only available in the English language. You must download the latest version of the mobile banking app only available on select mobile devices message and data rates may apply member fdic welcome back into dear doctor the show where i answer life's questions with an ice cold can of dr pepper sheila let's hear from our next caller would you dear doctor my friend supported me during a tough time but what's the right gift that says thanks for being a shoulder to cry on okay this one's easy i say give her a delicious dr pepper nothing says thanks girl better than a -a one-of-a-kind soda Yes, any Dr. Pepper flavor will do. Now, just a reminder that I don't need to be a real doctor to know that Dr. Pepper is the one you deserve. Back to Talking Cowboys. Back here on Talking Cowboys, this portion of the show is brought to you by Quaker Oats, a super trusted superfood. Quaker Oats, the official oatmeal sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. Isaiah! Nope, you're just going to read your magazine it's a instead. Nice magazine. Um, it is a nice magazine. I did not get in my oats, Kyle, because mm. the show got moved back to 10 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Last week when it was at 9 o'clock, I was here in time to get some oats. Ready to roll. I was ready to roll with the rolled oats. Um, yeah. Had the best show you've ever had. Probably not, but I mean, it's okay. <laughs> um, I love my oats, but I haven't had any today. What do you, what do you feel like the best show you've ever had was? Was that the hot sauce episode? Uh, it's got to be the, the white draws. White draws. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was way back. Hot sauce was a good one, though. The hot that sauce. That was Nick's. That was your best show for sure. Yeah. Hands down. Yeah. Put so that on your real, sir. So, so this is this is an interesting topic to me because I'm definitely one of those people that <coughs> I don't like watching anything that I do mm-hmm. over again. I right. hate the way my voice sounds. Like I never feel like anything is ever where I'm like, oh yeah, this was really good today. Got so it. do yeah. you guys feel that way? Like you know, whether you're calling a game or you know when, when you're doing. I don't know. Heck, even when you played it's, in games, did you ever feel like cringe a like, lot of times? Yeah, that's the way I feel about. It. Yeah, correct. Like the way you acted when when we brought up that uh, the wrestling video, which I didn't think it was bad, mm. but you were like you didn't want to see it. I'm, I'm <laughs> totally should I bring like it that. up again? No. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> but are you guys well, like doesn't that? Bring up the other guys... video for good. I think I was <laughs> the white yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that one. I think too. to be more <laughs> critical on you know what I what I put forth, I want to be able to have like a, a mm-hmm. good understanding of it because not everyone hears your voice and thinks, mm. oh, that's cringe. Right. It's only you that feels that way. So yeah. like, I just took that out of my mind. And but There's like it. actors that say like they never watch never their movies. And, that's and why like that. yeah, yeah. I couldn't imagine. I don't that. like to, but I think it's necessary. Yeah. And plus, you know, yeah. like our, our coach, true. our coach that we have is he's pretty anal when it comes to, you know, yeah. be on top of on, on top of your um, feedback. So I have to watch that with, <laughs> with his perspective. I got you. You know, so I, I try to take that and take the wisdom from people who have been there, done that coach greats and look at it from their lens because if you don't then you feel like you that you know better yeah yeah 
I just want to know what Jerry Madelon would say about that that sentence. The the thing about going back and watching it is the uh, I, I had a mentor very early on tell me like you have to get over that because yeah. like for me specifically I I call games in every sport and I kind of go and do that a lot. I want to get better at it. It's like watching film is kind of the, the the easy way to look at it. It may not be good film. <laughs> you may have to kind of get over it a little bit right. and and put your pride aside. But I've I've gotten into a rhythm where once or twice a month I'll go back and watch a game in its entirely or watch a, a pregame or postgame mm-hmm. show, Talking Cowboys draft show in its entirety and, and really like dissect it and go into it. It's like you said, it's tough at, at first to kind of get into it and listen to your own voice. But at some point it, it turns around. At some point it does. And now I just listen to Isaiah's voice. That's, that's the best part about it. Right. All right. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, gentlemen. There's not an elephant actually in the room, Isaiah. Oh. Sorry. The the fact that there has been zero movement from the Dallas Cowboys this offseason. The one outside signing has been Eric Kendricks. Uh, you've seen all these guys leave at different t- points throughout the offseason, like a Tyrant Smith, a Dorrance Armstrong, mm. so on and so forth. I can mm. name all of them. but the I Yadis won't. Fowler. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So why? I mean, th- that's kind of the number one concern right now of teams right now or of fans, I should say, right now about this Dallas Cowboys team. Why? It's- the concern stemming. Uh, look, I'll dive into it. The concern yes. stemming from from upstairs is that if uh, assigning anybody this go around, whether it be in free agency or um you know, extending anybody out at this point or restructuring anything, you're pushing money along in in those voidable years and and the cash that you would spend now. You're pushing those that that money into voidable years where they feel like they're going to have restricting cap situations mm-hmm. in 2025, 2026, etc. Not as much in 26; it's more so a 25 problem. That is the understanding from upstairs. I'm trying to communicate that clearly because there is a clear disconnect between Twitter and upstairs <laughs> as far as what the cap situation exactly looks like. I am the messenger. Do not kill the messenger. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. We're not we're not selling hope by telling exactly. the facts. That's not what we're trying to do here. It's unfortunate. They haven't signed players yet. They haven't retained some good talent like an Armstrong. I mean, a Biotis, you don't have a starting center right now, so I'll throw him in the mix. Left tackle, Tyron Smith. I think, you you uh, can fix that by the draft. Yeah. And you can fix that by replacing free agents at some point. But when you don't have money to spend, you don't have money to spend. And I think this turned meteoric whenever Jonathan Hankins left and his contract mm-hmm. was basically nothing. And the, yeah. uh, the fans were like, okay, we, we can't afford that. So um, it's I, I think that's where most of this – frustration had stemmed around i don't think hankins was a situation where they couldn't afford him though i think it was a situation where he wanted to go play for dirty and get back and get that's back on the west coast i yeah. I, I think that's that's what i believe as far as hankins goes but um i haven't talked to the man so i don't know that 100 sure. but I, I don't think it was 100 financial but i mean you look at the other situations and the guys that they have resigned and the the dollar amounts that they've resigned them for the outside free agents that have gone on and signed for you know low dollar amounts as well um i, I think you can fully expect that this team is just looking forward to to the draft and trying to address needs in the draft and i think post june one you'll probably see that free agent you know swing that you see in the summer i think they'll be a little bit more active in that just trying to fill up the team but if you're looking for a big name like you know a derrick henry going into the offseason or anything like that i don't really know what you were expecting to be honest because if signing a guy like that let's just let's take money out of the equation it's a 30 year old coming into a running back room where they are trying to improve uh and have a little bit more youth in that room as well <clears throat> like they're going to go draft a guy and they're expecting that guy to be able to step up and beat rb1 yeah uh, you look at that running back room i don't think anyone would be confident in anybody in that room being rb1 right now and, and being able to carry on that load so you go get a jonathan brooks you go get a trey benson etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, that's what they need in that room that's just one example but yeah. I, th- I think that can kind of go on both sides of the ball well, and I think you you bring up a great point of there's still time to address needs. It just hasn't happened yet because you have to feel the team. I mean, pure and simple, you've <laughs> got to you've got to put together your draft picks, which you don't have a, a boatload of. You've got a normal amount with seven, but you don't you don't have the money to go out there and sign all these guys that you would want to sign at some point. And I've I've heard this analogy from throughout the building, but it's like spending on a credit card. And that credit card, at some point, whenever you kick contracts down the road, whether it be Dak, Zach Martin, uh, Tyron Smith, Terrence Steele, you're pushing this money further and further away. But at some point, it will come back and hit the cap. 
And the, I think a big misconception along the way is that cash doesn't count toward the cap. That's wrong. At some point, every single dollar that's given as a cash offer or a, a signing bonus or whatever that ends up being, that money will at some point hit the cap. It's just whether of when it will hit the cap. And so it, whenever you're saying, oh, that money's all gone, that $40 million that you gave the DAC as a signing bonus, that's just not going to ever hit. It's going to hit. And that's part of it is it's all kind of hitting at this point in time. So you've spent the credit card. You've swiped it. Yeah. You've filled it a team over the last couple of years. You struck out in the playoffs, which is unfortunate, fortunate, but you won 12 games in each of the last three years. you got to find a way to field the team in 2024, then continue to push on that window down the line. Yeah. That's what they're trying to do right now. They're doing hard stuff right now. And this is where this organization is at. You know, you guys have laid out some great examples. You just laid it out, Nick, in terms of where these guys are at situationally. But the reality is the, they have to watch their friends go go on vacations right now. They don't have the bread to do it. And that's that's real. Really, I don't know if everybody's ever been in that position before. I'm in like, it right now, actually. Yeah, you spent <laughs> yeah. you spent your bread. You know what I'm saying? Like you might have you might have got a nice car. You might have got you know a nice house or three whatever kids. it might be. Yeah, three kids just popped out of nowhere. Yeah. But then but then like all your friends are like, hey, we're about to go. We're about to go to to Europe. You want to come? You're like, ah. yeah. The way my bank account's set up right now, I just can't <laughs> do that. So you got to sit back and you got to watch them go have fun. Right? And you just got to trust and believe in your process and say, okay, mm -hmm. next year, this time around, I'll be in a better position to be able to go do the things that I want to do. I'm going to go join yeah. Barry Church on the skiing exactly. in Aspen. I'm going to exactly. make it happen. You know right. what I'm saying? So, like, that's where they're at. They're making grown-up decisions right now, and, and, and it sucks. And nobody likes not being able to do what you want to do, but at some point in time, you have to be an adult about it. You have to be responsible, and you have to do the things that are absolutely necessary to put you in a position in the future. Otherwise, you keep digging a bigger hole. And so from the fan standpoint, I understand their frustration because yeah. of, one, Jerry repeatedly saying the all-in thing, which yeah. made everything worse, worse to begin with. The other part is that you see the salary cap go up $30 million and you just assume, well, yeah, business is booming in the NFL. It's just going to keep going up like that. I don't get the sense that the Cowboys feel like that's going to continue to happen. So they are projecting out, yeah. like looking into the future, like as, as you mentioned. You know, So you got to factor that in the as well. The number that we were told was – 10 million over the next three years is yep. what it would rise from what it is right now. So it it, it took a step up and then it's going to even out. It'll still go up because yeah. it's the NFL, but if not you look the at skyrocket that it was this past off. If you look at pre pandemic era of a salary cap jump, it's typically about 7%, and that would equate to about 16 million. So there you go. So that's part of it. And then the other thing is, is that. It's, it's told to us that this is being done so that they can be sure that they're able to re-sign Dak, CD, and Micah. Yeah. And then none of that stuff's happening. But then there's even this. Even if it does happen, or it was happening right now and those guys were getting re-signed, if you're a fan, there's a party that is looking at it like, well, yeah, we already have those. We're, we want more stuff. That stuff wasn't good enough for us to even beat the Packers. You know, yeah. If those three guys that you're paying are um, – Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Chris Jones, you're just like, yeah, no, no, I understand. We're not going to be able done. to keep, you know, uh, all of our DBs, and we're going to have to make some moves and stuff like that. And we're going to lose a Tyreek Hill, but then we're going to go on and we're going to keep playing in Super Bowls. And so you're not getting any closer to Super Bowls, and you're not getting any additional players. So my big thing on this is it's like it's got to be tough for a fan because – on paper, your team is not going to be better next year than yeah. it was this previous year. And this previous year, it wasn't good enough to get over the hump either. And so it's like, well, if you're not adding any new pieces, then wh what am I supposed to hope for? Where am I supposed to get excited about this team going into next season? And uh, that's why I kind of compare it to, I, I wrote today about what Mike McCarthy said last week. I compare it to 2014 and 2016. Those were really good years for the Cowboys, but those were years going into them where the expectations have been had been lowered. You know, I mean, Jerry said in that 2014 in training camp that it was going to be an uphill battle. And that's a wild coming from a Jerry Jones who never talks like that at training camp. It's usually mm -hmm. very positive, whatever. And what did they do in 2014? They end up having a great season. And then in 2016, you know, they're coming off of Romo was hurt in 2015. They only win four games. So you're sitting there like, all right, well, this will be the year. Because... And then Romo goes down in the preseason. Yep. And you're just like, oh, they're going to they're gonna rely on this fourth round pick. And they end up winning 13 games to get the one seed. And so when expectations have been lowered, the Cowboys have responded. Now they still haven't made a deep playoff run. And that's ultimately what this crew is going to be decided on. But I, I get both sides of it. The only issue is, though, is like when you talk about like taking it to Twitter, uh, 
it just gets like kind of dark and 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 just the way i don't know the back and forth with people it just it, it just gets so negative that it like for example for myself like i don't even like getting involved with it just because um there's just you can have 10 good interactions and then three just super negative ones to yeah. where you're just like i'm not doing this anymore mm -hmm. like i'm not getting paid any extra to do this thing like why am i taking my time out of the day so people are going to take shots at me and stuff like that so i totally I'm on the side of sometimes you just got to take a step back from doing all that stuff too. So yeah. like you said, there's two sides to it. There's the side of it. That's the frustrated fan. And I get it. I grew up a Cowboys fan. I want to see this team win just as much as anybody on the other side. There's the, the, the business element of the NFL and salary cap. Jerry Jones has said it before. And I believe him in this matter because I see what he do, does around the building. If he didn't have a salary cap, he would pay for a team that would win the Super Bowl every year. It would he would New York Yankees this thing more than anybody because the Yankees don't have a salary cap. He would be the Dallas Cowboys without a salary cap as well. I believe that he wants to win as bad as anybody. The longer I cover the team, I, I doubt that a little bit more each I, year that goes by. No, but yeah, I don't know. About um, that. Why why do you doubt it? I mean, I don't know. I don't know if fine. you want to get into um, it, but no, no, it's fine. I just think that there's certain areas where uh, coaching staff, for example. Mm -hmm. There's no salary cap on coaching staff. No. Like, so how come they don't just go out and you're just always like, oh, yeah, well, the Cowboys just spend whatever. And they just get like, you know, they literally have like they the, the Dallas Cowboys, how mm -hmm. much they're worth. They literally every time you, you like every time you look at their staff, best wide receiver coach, best running back coach. Best. I mean, you see it in college. You see it all the time in college. The big yeah. money teams, the, the Alabamas and stuff like that. The Georgias, they're not they're not. Yeah, they bring up – now their staffs are, are a little bit different because there's a lot of GAs and things like that. But, mm -hmm. like, there's just, like, little things like that. The longer I cover the team, I'm like, is it really exhausting every single last dollar? Maybe. Well, who would you go get in that element? I mean, you went and got Mike McCarthy, who at the time – I mean, we're five years down the road now. At the time, he was one of the few Super Bowl active head coaches in the NFL that had been to the mountaintop and done it. I know it's been a long time, trust me. But – he was one of them that had done it. Other than that, what are you going to get? You're going to get John Harbaugh. You're going to get Mike Tomlin. You're going to get Bill Belichick. Even right now, I don't think Bill Belichick is a better hire than what Mike McCarthy has done. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's there's elements to it. I agree with you. And you could spend on maybe position coaches, but I don't think we've had a problem with any of the position coaches along the way. And if we have, we've, I mean, it's been a quick thing. I just Al Harris Dallas, has been great. I, I, Adam Dirty's yeah, because even that takes into the individual. Like the Dallas Cowboys coaching staff is not like one of the highest paid coaching staffs. And sure, like you would assume yeah. with everything with the Dallas but Cowboys, would you'd be. assume like no, no, this is every every single part of this best, best, best. Like you know when those NFLPA surveys come out, every single thing would be best, best. It's the Dallas Cowboys. You you have every single thing. So that's a good point. I don't know. There, I, just, I mean, they're longer the I cover the team, that, believe me. There's a lot of times where I used to argue with people, other reporters and things like that, saying that like oh, Jerry doesn't care about winning, whatever. He All he cares about is the money. And I'm like, well, if you win big, that you nothing's going to bring more in money. more money than that. Yeah. So I don't yeah. I don't doubt. I'm just saying that I don't doubt 100% what you're saying. I'm just saying every year I cover the team, the more and more Absolutely. I'm just kind of like, is that really the case? Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. There's elements to it. There's levels to it. And we've seen <clears> that along the way. And I think <laughs> this offseason brings a little bit of all of those elements out. So everybody has an opinion over a certain area or aspect of this team. And it's going to continue to grow as the offseason goes along, which is why we'll be here as we continue to talk about it. All right, we've got to take our second break. When we come back, could there be a possible homecoming in Dallas? We'll talk about it when we come back right after this. They say champions are remembered, but legends are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you. Are are you ready to take coffee off your grocery list forever? Black Rifle Coffee Club is here to help. As a coffee club member, you'll get your favorite coffees roasted, packaged, and shipped to your door free of charge on your preferred schedule. Set it, forget it, and never run low on coffee again. Members also get exclusive deals on coffee, products, and discounts from partner brands. Ease your mind and let Black Rifle worry about your coffee supply. 
Go to BlackRifleCoffee.com to join the coffee club today. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites in a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the playmaker at GetJackBlack.com slash Cowboys with the code CowboysVIP. That's GetJackBlack.com black.com slash cowboys with the code cowboys vip todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable and now todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour <laughs> but the good news is todd has at&t 5g that is fast reliable and secure and he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew at&t 5g fast reliable secure it's not complicated 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Back to Talking Cowboys. Back here on Talking Cowboys presented by Black Rifle Coffee Company. This segment of the show was brought to you by Invisalign, the official smile of the Dallas Cowboys. Isaiah's already got a smile on, ready to roll. John Machoda. <laughs> Nick Harris, Chris Beam in the back. I'm Kyle Yeomans. All right. Would you ever return to a team that lets you walk in free agency? Would you ever come back if if the time and the place was right? Yep. Would you ever do it? Absolutely. Yeah. Especially yeah. if uh, the options that <laughs> I was looking at whenever that team did leave me leave me into the uh, free agency pool um, mm -hmm. weren't weren't abundant. Mm -hmm. I'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, would you, if you were the Dallas Cowboys, welcome Ezekiel Elliott back into the fold? Yes. As a part of this team? Yes. Why? I think that he was a foundational pillar. I think he was an exemplary player for this organization. I think that way he provided this team um, can't be forgotten. I think he's still productive. I think that's probably the more important thing at this point um, in regards to where he would be valuable to this team. Uh, red zone, blocking. Um, obviously you still need a piece that would coincide with him. Um, but I think if you're going to carry, you know, three solid backs on this roster, I think that he could still provide value for you depending on the guy that you, that you end up getting in the draft. Mm. Okay. So he would be the tandem back. I mean, that's kind of the expectation. He's not going to be RB one. He's going to be paid like a backup mm -hmm. running back. And then he would be the guy to, mentor this next generation would you do it would you bring him back you mentioned everything that he does well blocking mm -hmm. you have that in the running back room red zone presence you don't have that but you can go get that in the draft yeah. um I, I i struggle with throwing ezekiel elliott into that running back room when the defensive tackle position only has one body in it right mm -hmm. now when um the linebacker core could really use an extra body or two. The safety unit arguably could use an extra body or two. Corner as well. I mean, you could look all around the team. Mm -hmm. I just I feel like they can go draft a running back, pair him with Rico Dowdle, uh, Deuce Vaughn, Hunter mm -hmm. Lipke in that room, and just see what tandem works best. I don't. I, I think I think the running back room issues from last year would not have been solved with Ezekiel no. Elliott. So. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. I don't think there's necessarily a huge value, but if you get him on a veteran minimum, he mm -hmm. wants to come in and he understands that he'd be competing for a job, not that he would have one. Correct. Then sure, yeah, yeah. That, that's fine. That's that's the, the mindset that I have. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying just bring him in and hand him the job, but yeah. I'm not. As much as I love Deuce Vaughn, I'm not confident that he'll be on this roster by the end of training camp. Yeah. That's just being. He's gonna have to show out. He's gonna show out yeah. on offense and special teams. Yep. And unfortunately. His, his size has had an impact on his ability to be effective in both of those regards mm -hmm. to date. Mm -hmm. um, not his abilities, just how effective he's been. So that's a reality. That's been his reality his entire life, and, and that's the situation he finds himself in. He has to find a way. He always has up to date, but he has he's going to have to prove that. And for those reasons, I don't see – I don't I don't have a crystal ball, but I don't foresee him having enough of an impact from what I've, the evidence that I have on film – in the league for him to be on this roster. So because of that, I think that you bring in another Zeke and whether you put him at two or three, I don't freaking care, right? You bring him in, he has wisdom, right? And then you still have to get your guy in the draft. I will say, um, and I know it's not, it's, it's not comparing apples and apples, but 
uh, Darren Sproles had a very similar rookie season, yep. and yep. it, it kind of took him a year to figure be able to out. figure out how to use his body, right. and then he got hurt, and I, he was lucky he wasn't out of the league in Correct. the first two, three years. Yep. So um, there's still hope there, I think, yeah. for Deuce Vaughn. And I think these new kickoff rules kind of give him an opportunity to be able to see what he can do with uh, you know, the, the, the return game as well. So. Yeah, I would be fine with, with Zeke coming back, depending on what they do in the draft. But mm -hmm. if you're using a second or third round pick, you know, on a on a on a back, I expect that to be your guy. Yep. That's the guy that you need to be uh, giving the majority of the touches to. But if they don't, because I thought that was going to happen last year, to be honest with you, when they parted ways with Zeke, I thought they would draft a running back, second, third, fourth round. They and wanted that didn't, to, yeah, and that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And so, if let's say that happens again this year's draft, where you know, in the second round, just the right guy isn't there for the value, and they mm -hmm. go another route. And then the third just isn't the right guy for the value, whatever. Next thing you know, you're not getting a uh, running back to the fifth or sixth round. I, I could be interested in the Zeke return that. But like right now, I don't think it makes any, it doesn't make any sense. And, and not, just, not just Zeke, it's just really any running back in general. Yeah. You know, Dalvin it, Cook, whatever. And I, I like the point that Nick brought up too about there are other positions to be addressed right now. And running back is so deep in this draft class. I mean, we can, I, I mean, I'll open up this Dallas Star magazine draft guide. Uh, and, plug. Yeah, yeah, and just uh, look at some of these guys. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Jalen Wright out of Tennessee. Jalen Jonathan Brooks, Texas. Trey Benson, Bucky Irving, Blake Coral. I mean, you've got options mm -hmm. in the upcoming draft. That's that's where you find your running back talent. But when it comes to veterans in a specific position, I would rather have them at linebacker. I would rather have them at defensive tackle, safety, even if there's a possibility. I know you've got veterans at safety now, but you need you need extra rotation there too. So yeah. let let the the draft play out first, and then we can talk about it. Is kind of where yeah. I'm at as well. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I think it's going to be a very similar situation where it's a big talking point all the way up until training camp, and even the be. first couple of weeks of training camp, and then he we'll signs with somebody. somebody so. yeah. Yeah. But if they take a running back in the second or third round, I don't think it'll be a talking point for the Cowboys. I really don't. I, I hope not. But can they? <laughs> it might be. But like, can I they, though? Not. You know what I'm saying? With the holes that they have, can you take a running back that early? That's, that's think, my question. If, if, yeah. if you're Mike McCarthy yeah. and – this is your second year of calling the offense, and you think it's going to make that much of a difference in your offense, that particular player, then, yeah, I could see him doing it, yeah. Uh, offensive line, running back, defensive tackle, first three rounds. Where do you have the issue? Deep tackle. I feel like there's more running backs available than deep tackles. They're good, that are going like to play the style of play that Zimmer okay, wants. I feel like flip them. Let's say it's a tackle running back. And, 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 I, and yeah. I agree with you. But you, you, need, you but can you, even say that's a bigger need, but in terms of value, like the chances of that – Running back coming in and making immediate impact in the defensive tackle to me aren't even in the same neighborhood. It's not even close. Like, what are you getting from that defensive tackle in year one? <laughs> they better, better get a lot yeah. in the Zimmer system. I think body. That, you I, have you have to. I in, think, in his system, you have to. You cannot have an undersized interior defense alignment in his system. Well, you not even have one. And he was in, he was your first round pick last he year. He can't be the guy. Not at his current size. I don't yeah. know where he's at. I haven't seen him since the offseason started. Yeah. But based upon where he ended last year, he. At that size is ineffective in a Zimmer system. Defensive tackle is so much tougher to come in and be pro Correct. ready, though. Like, I, I it still is think, a man which is why I, I say, can you afford? You have two offensive line positions that have to be filled. Now right. you could easily say, okay, yeah, we have some guys that you know Hoffman and things of that nature that we hope are going to come in and fill the void. But I think the defensive hope is tackle, not your thing. <laughs> I think the defensive tackle will be addressed with some type of a veteran player. I don't I, I whether it be a trade, how they got Hankins, whatever. There's gonna be mm -hmm. something that happens there. I do not see them relying on, oh well, we better take a defensive tackle in the first two rounds to pair with Mazi and Osa. I just don't yeah. see that happen. I think they need a veteran guy who and when I say that, it's not gonna be somebody when the move happens and everyone's gonna be like, Oh, this fixes everything. Yeah. Just like no one was really acting Correct. that way when they got Hankins. Correct. But it's gonna have to be a veteran that's like been around the game yeah. who it's not gonna be somebody that gets six, seven sacks. They're not gonna be but they're gonna be a, just a solid player in the middle that that Zimmer likes. That's what's gonna happen. Three thirty you know? plus. Yeah. Big yeah, big body in there big that's a beef. veteran. Gotta be. Big beef. Gotta yeah. be. Yeah, it does. Mason Smith, <laughs> McKinley Jackson, those are two names that come to mind. LSU yeah. and Texas A and M. So We'll, uh, what rounds we'll do they have to do for that? Uh, Mason Smith, third, potentially. Uh, McKinley, I think they can get him in on, on day th day three, but yeah. I would worry that he would go in the fourth. But yeah. We'll see. He'd be probably early. Day three is kind three. of a it's, – it's, it's a, a scatterboard. Like, mm -hmm. there's guys that are getting fourth-round grades that might not get drafted. I mean, day three wow. is completely wide open this year. Wow. So, Yeah. 
Yeah. That that break between round three and four this year where you sleep on your board and you're going into day three is going to be the most stressful point of a lot of teams' yeah. years. After the top 100. It's going to be – yeah, it, it, top 100 is pretty stout. Like, you've got starters at each position, and it's pretty even across the board. Then in some positions, once day three starts, it just drops off. So it's going to be really interesting to see how teams combat that. Countdown has begun, Kyle. Darn right it has. You Boom. know how many days? Right off the top of your head? 26? 23. Oh, 23. 23 days. Jordan. Jordan. Yeah. Let's go. There you go. go. MJ Day. MJ Day. That's going to do it for us here on Talking Cowboys. We'll be back on Tuesday, 10 a.m. Central, to continue to talk it down. We may start doing some like seven round mocks or something in here. I want to get Isaiah's. I won't be here next knowledge. week. What are you doing? What? You climbing Mount Everest? No, no, definitely. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Kilimanjaro's yeah. done. It looks like you got the weight back, though. I'm that, getting it back. I'm telling you, that day that you came back from Slim. Out, you looked slim. I was concerned. Depleted. I was concerned. concerned. <laughs> I was like, wow. We I, were, was, I was concerned when you walked in wearing Oregon neon, but I mean, yeah, that's okay. it's fine. I mean, being that you guys have them on the cover. <sighs> yeah, big time. Blood clot. Sorry. A what? What the French toast. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going to be next week? You just you just out? Uh, I will be in... Do you on in, your vacation that no, I'm going to have to watch? I, I will be in L.A. Yeah, for... put your business on the street. What are you doing in L.A.? <laughs> I'll be in La La Land. La La Land. Yeah. We'll have fun. Represent, have fun. Representing the boys in some form. We'll so. be back tomorrow. Or, I mean, uh, Tuesday. We'll be yep. back Tuesday. All right. For Chris Beam, Isaiah Stanback, John Machota, Nick Harris, I'm Kyle Yeoman saying so long from Talking Cowboys. We will see you next week. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?